Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, today we will have a lecture about logic. This is number three in this topic. And it's all part of the course Math Plus and Problems presented on Unizor.com. The course Math Plus and Problems is about solving problems. And there is a prerequisite course which is called Math for Teens. Um, so the math for teens is much more theoretical, with like theorems and proofs, etc. Now this is the course which is concentrated only on solving different problems, which are not exactly of theoretical kind. Um, sometimes it's maybe more difficult. Sometimes, like today, for example, it's just the common sense problems. The common sense actually is called logic by mathematicians. Um, so, uh, it's very important to solve problems. Actually, my personal understanding is that the whole purpose of uh, studying mathematics uh, is basically to develop your ability to solve problems. And the more problems you solve, doesn't matter which ones. And mathematics, mathematics presents the whole field of different problems. So, the more problems you solve, the better you will be equipped to solve real problems of real life. Um, so, today's problems do not require like a lot of theoretical knowledge. Basically, it's, I think it's just none at all. Just the common sense. And uh, I think it's very useful in this particular um, situation. They're not difficult at all. And what I suggest you is, whenever you listen to the presentation of this problem, stop watching, pause the, the video, and uh, try to solve your, uh, the problem yourself. Spend some time. It's very important to spend some time thinking. Thinking is something, the process which I encourage you to get involved in. So you think about solution to this problem, and even if you didn't sell, do, did not solve it, listen to whatever uh, I present as a solution, it's still very useful to think about this particular problem. Okay, so let's get to the problems. Okay, the first one is, okay, you have a tourist which comes to a fork on the road. One is called the city of truth, another city of lies. So in the city of truth, people, all people, only tell the truth. In the city of lies, all people always tell lies. Now, he doesn't know where to go, but he wants to go to the city of truth, but he is on a fork, and he doesn't know where to go. Well, luckily, there is a, pro there, there, there is a person here, right here, sitting. And the tourist can ask the person basically how to get to the city of truth so the question is since we don't really know whether this person lives here or there so he doesn't live anywhere else he, so, so he, either he's telling the truth or he's telling the, the lie so question is what kind of a question should tourists ask this person to definitely know for sure how to get to the city of truth so, pause the video, think about this. Now, I will just tell the, uh, the answer. The question is, show direction to a city where you live, where you live. So, let's just think about it. Let's assume this person is from the city of truth and he tells the truth. Then, if we will ask him to show the direction to a city, he will show to the city of truth where he lives. Right? So everything is fine. He will show direction to the city of truth. What if he li lives in the city of lie? Well, then he is supposed to lie. Now, we are asking him to show direction to a city where, where, he live, where he lives. So, 
he will not point to the city where he lives, he will lie, which means he will point to the city of truth. So in both cases, whether he lives in the city of truth, and then he will show to the city of truth, or he lives in the city of lie, and he lies about where he lives, and shows the direction again to the city of truth, we will have the direction to the city of truth. That's it. And the problem. So, uh, let me just tell again, these are not really like requiring theoretical knowledge problems. These are just common sense problems and very easy to solve. All you have to do is just to think about it. Next problem. Okay, the next problem is a very old one because I remember <laughs> myself actually somebody was uh, asking me this problem when I was in, in school. That was like, I don't know, 60 years ago, maybe more. Uh, okay, so we have the man, we have the wolf, we have goat, and we have cabbage. Now, in the presence of man, nobody eats anything. But as soon as the animals, whatever, they just by themselves, then wolf can eat goat. Wolf can eat goat. Goat can eat cabbage. Now, now we have a river with two banks. So all these guys, man, wolf, goat, and cabbage are on this side of the river. There is a boat here, but the boat can hold only a man who basically does the job to, to row and to go to another uh, side of the river, and one of these guys, either a wolf or a cabbage or a goat. So. He has to go to another side with all these animals and cabbage, whatever, so that nobody kind of eats anybody else. Every, uh, everything on this side should be uh, whole. So question is, how can he do it? What's the sequence of actions? I mean, obviously, if he will take man and a wolf to the other side, while he is on another side, goat will eat cabbage. So there are some obvious things which cannot be done. So the question is, how can he do it? All right, so again, pause the video, think about this, and I will just tell the, so the, the solution. So the first, obviously, wolf doesn't eat cabbage. So if he will take the wolf with him, to a boat. Everything is safe. Okay, so first from A, man and goat will go to B. Now what's next? Well, obviously it doesn't make any sense to get the goat back, so the back man should go by, by himself. So from B, man goes back to uh, side A of the river. Okay, now we have a goat here. And man, wolf, and cabbage here. Okay. Here actually we have two ways to, to do something, but uh, I, I'm suggesting the one. So the man should take the wolf and go to side B. Now, wolf is there. Man and wolf. So far, in the presence of man, nobody eats anybody. So he takes the goat and goes back. So now, from B back to A, the man and the goat go back to A. So now we have only wolf on the A side.
and man and goat are here. Again, in the presence of man, goat doesn't eat cabbage. Wolf is just by himself. So now he takes the cabbage and goes this way. So from A, man and cabbage goes to B. So now we have man and cabbage. Nobody eats anything. So man can go back by himself. Wolf doesn't eat cabbage. So man from B goes back to A. So now he is here. The wolf and the cabbage are remaining on the side B. Wolf doesn't eat cabbage, everything is fine. Now he takes the goat and goes, and that's the end. So these are steps to get all participants in this trip across the river. Okay, next. Okay. Fire somewhere. Okay. Next problem. So there is a revolver. Revolver has potential for six bullets. And the chamber can be spun. Okay. Now there is only one bullet. In the revolver. So, the chamber is spun, and the man is trying to hit the target. Well, he does a shot, and there is no bullet comes out. Okay, so it's only one bullet out of six, right? So, after they, they spun the, the chamber, he uh, make, makes one shot, and there is no bullet. Now. The question is, should or should or should not he spun the chamber again um, to to shoot the target? What is the better chance for him to to make a real shot, whether he is uh, spinning or not spinning the chamber? Again, think about this. Pause the video. Now I will tell the answer. Now, let's just think about it. Whenever there is one bullet, you spawn the chamber, what's the probability of uh, shooting the real bullet if there is only one bullet out of six? Well, there is one out of six chance. So it's the probability one sixth. Now, if he does not spin the chamber, he knows that he has already made one particular shot and the bullet was not there. So there are only five remaining bullets. So the probability that the real bullet is one of those five places, one fifth. Which means this is the better chance. So he better not spin the chamber again because that would increase the probability to hit the target. Okay, that's it. Very simple problem. You just have to realize what is a probability. Probability is basically a, a fraction which gives you the how many chances out of how many successful chances out of all chances are present. So number of all chances after the first shot without spinning the chamber. So number of the total chances is five and number of successful chances only one, so it's one fifth. If you spin, then you basically lose the information uh, which you have. The information was that in that particular chamber which you just used, there is no bullet. So now if you're spinning, you're basically disregarding this information, and the less information you have, the less chances to, 
cook to win basically with her. Okay, next. Okay, so you have two players, player A and player B. They're playing the game where either A wins and B loses, or B wins and A loses. They have agreed that if somebody wins, it pays one dollar to, I mean, if somebody is losing, sorry, then he is paying one dollar to the winner. So the loser pays one dollar to a winner, always. Now, they both have initial capital of one hundred dollars, both of them. Then they play, at the end, here is the information at the end, A won 10 games, B has $120. So at the end, this is the result. A has won 10 games, B has $120 in the pocket. Question is, how many games were played? Pause the video and think about this. Now, here is the answer. Again, absolutely common sense answer. Let's just think about it. Obviously, the net result is, since this is 20, that B has won 20 that, that games more than, 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 than A. That's obvious. But at the same time, A has won 10. So, how many games B should win to still have $20 extra? Well, if he wins 10 games, this should win 30 games. That would give him $20 extra, which he has. And the total number is 40, 40 games. So, they have played 40 games, 10 games were won by A, 30 games uh, were won by, by B. And that's why he has a difference of $20. So the net result is A has lost $20 and ended up with 80 And B has win, ha, he has won 30 games and that's why his total is $120. So total is 40 games. That's the answer. Okay. As you see, all these problems which I'm presenting right now are, well, kind of real life, basically. I mean, obviously it can be presented in some other more real um, kind of conditions. Uh, this is still kind of logic, which is part of the mess. But again, the, uh, the conditions of all these games uh, do not require any kind of special mathematical knowledge, just the common sense. Okay, my last problem is about three wise men. So you have three wise men, A, B, and C. Now, it is important that they are wise men. So they have certain common sense, logic, whatever, they can think about certain things and basically come to logical conclusion. So they were discussing something very important, some very deep philosophical problems, tired, and basically fell asleep. And it was actually happening somewhere in a square, let's say, in a park, whatever. So these three wise men are asleep, and while they are asleep, some joker actually decided decided to to have a joke basically t on them and uh, he took the shoe wax and put some black wax on foreheads of all of those three wise men so each of them has some black spot on the on the on the uh, forehead all right kind of funny obviously but in any case so they woke up at the same time, and each one 
saw the black spots on the uh, foreheads of uh, uh, the two other guys and basically started to laugh at them. Yes, how funny it is, the person has a shoebox on his forehead, right? Okay, then all of a sudden one of them, let's consider A, who was just a little bit wiser than the others, he stopped laughing, realizing that the box is on his forehead as well. Purely logical, without, you know, touching anything, etc. He was just thinking and he came to a conclusion that the shoebox is on his forehead as well. And he stopped laughing and went to, to the bathroom to, to wash his forehead, basically. And everybody then realized the same thing. So, the question is, what do you think his logical thinking might be to come up with this particular conclusion that his forehead is also um, uh, with, with, a, with a box spot? Okay. Now, pause the video and think about his logic. And here is what I think about this. A can think the following way. All right, let's assume, assume that I'm clean. Assumes he is clean. So I don't have anything on my forehead, but B and C do have because, you know, I see them, right? So then B is a wise man, definitely not a fool. So what does B see? B would then see that the spot is only C with a wax and A is clean. So what does B think in this particular thing? So what A thinks that B thinks in this particular case? Well, since B, assuming A is clean, since B sees only clean A and uh, Shuvax on the C's uh, forehead, and he is laughing and C is laughing. So B is thinking, okay, what is C laughing at? A is clean, so C must be laughing at me. And then B would immediately realize that the box is on his forehead as well as on C. And he would stop laughing. But he is not stopping, he is still laughing. So what is he laughing at? He is laughing because my assumption is wrong. That's why A has decided, and as I said, A was just a little bit wiser. So he came to the same conclusion, to, to this conclusion a little bit earlier than others. But in theory, everybody else can think in exactly the same way. So whoever is a little bit wiser came to this, uh, to this conclusion first. So A came to this conclusion. Assume it's clean, then B would immediately see that the box is only on C and not on A, and he would stop laughing because he understands that C laughs at him. Okay, so that's basically the logic. I think it's very important to, um, to come up with these solutions just for you, just by yourself. There are tons of problems of this type, and I will try to present more. But in any case, they are absolutely common sense. They do not require any uh, special mathematical knowledge, just good thinking. And that's exactly what I'm trying to encourage you to do, to think and all other problems which do require some math knowledge are also very important that you are not just listening to the lecture, whatever I'm presenting, but you do it yourself. You stop wherever I finish presentation of the any problem, not only logical problem, and then d d think about this yourself. You see, my initial problem for the whole course, courses actually, which I'm, which I'm presenting on Unizor.com, was to basically present a lot of very difficult problems. Well, not very difficult, but more or less non-standard problems. But then I realized that to present the problem which has a mathematical contents, you need the mathematical theory. So you need all these 
theoretical lectures, and that's why a big chunk of Unisor.com website is Math for Teens, which presents the uh, pure mathematics with certain problems, but the problems are more of a theoretical character. So that's why I had to really finish up that course, which is done basically, and you are welcome obviously to um, to take uh, uh, any lessons from there. And then I started to do these type of non-standard problems, which I basically call math plus and problems. By the way, Unisor.com is a totally free website. There is no um, advertisement, um, no uh, sign-in is optional, so you don't have to do it unless you're uh, studying under somebody's supervision. So everything is for your consumption. Well, knowledge is power, so gain the knowledge and study mathematics. And by the way, Unisor.com also has physics for teens course um, and uh, even relativity for all so-called where I present certain um, special relativity concepts okay that's it for today thank you very much and good luck <laughs>